Okay, trying to get some more videos done, some more information so I can get some things out. I've been, like I said, I've been kind of behind. So we'll go through, uh, I think, the second video I'm making for tonight. Uh, some of the things I'm going to go through on this video, electronics install. I detail how I, how and where I installed some of the control modules, boxes, amplifier, uh, more specifically the Marinko wiper control box, which again, the wipers are on hold. I mounted the motors to the windshield, went out this last weekend on a ranch, and in no time at all, I had a vertical split on the driver's side going straight up the windshield, and I took the windshield frame with the broken glass to a glass cutting company this morning. They looked at it, saw what I was trying to do, held one of the wiper motors, and said absolutely not. That the laminated safety glass just will not hold that weight. It, it'll crack again. I even asked them about putting um, some sort of a doubler on each side of the glass to help distribute the load from the wiper motor. They said it still would not work. One of the options I am going to look at will be at a later time taking the glass out and welding on to the frame that the glass goes in a uh, piece of metal that would hold the wiper motor. I actually kind of have an idea how I'd weld it and double it up and then have the glass cut so that it goes around that steel section to hold the wiper motors. I'm pretty sure that would work. I'm just not going to get into it right now. I'll have to, uh, to strip it, sandblast it, weld it, which I can do. I mean, that's not going to be an issue. Put the, the, the structural support on it and then have it repowder coated. Just for right now, I'm going to use the manual wiper up at the top. Um, I have not given up on electronic wiper systems when it was on the glass and it was working. Worked great. I mean, they were synchronized. I had intermittent wiper. They both function just like they were supposed to. It's just that the glass itself is not strong enough to hold the wiper motors. I will revisit it in the future and I will update when I do. So for now, in this video, I'm going to go over where I installed some of the components under the dash and onto the front firewall. As you will see in the video, there's plenty of room to put the components on the front firewall, especially on the driver's side. The heater takes up a lot of room in the passenger side. Can't use that, but there is room on the driver's side. The most difficult part of that is actually getting to where you can drill the holes through the firewall to put the bolts, nuts, etc. in to hold the components. Uh, I did not use any self-tapping screws. Everything was drilled. A bolt was put through it, washers on each side, um, lock nut or nut with Loctite. And just getting to the areas with a drill bit, I ended up using a uh, Dremel, the wand that will go on a Dremel that's flexible with a small drill bit in it, and I was able to get in there. Um, I put painter's tape on the firewall, marked where the holes needed to go, and then where I was able to drill out the holes and it worked. It's just tight, so be prepared for that. But what you will see in the video is where I mounted the Marinko, the wiper control board, um, the NVX amplifier, and the, uh, the uh, what PCS44 control system. I forget what it's called. I mentioned in the video, you'll see it. But the control system for all the lights with um, the integrated relays and the fuses the, has a separate outboard fuse box. It just made for a really clean install. Instead of se several separate wire harnesses for each of the lights that I installed, they all run through this um, PCS44 uh, control system. And you'll see in the video, but just made for a really clean install. Everything is weatherproofed. All the relays are built in. The fuse box is now up under the hood where it's really easy to get to the fuses. If any one component has an issue, a short, it just blows that fuse. Um, what they go to is, is for the switches, is the PCS44, they also have a 6.4 where you can have six switches. Um, I only needed the 4.4. And they go to the roof light bar, to the mirror lights, to the um, back lights, the rear facing lights I have hanging under the rear roof, and to the rock lights. Uh, I'll get into another video. I'll detail some of that installation. When I went out this weekend and used the lights, perfect. I mean, just a great combination. Um, strangely enough, one of my favorite lights I have on there are the, uh, the mirror lights. And I mean, they just put out a great wide pattern. They didn't, they, um, not a lot of throw, 
but just a great wide pattern of light to both sides and out in front of the vehicle. So when used in combination with the factory um, bumper light, the 11 inch bumper light that comes on the Pursuit Edition, the General, and then with the 40 inch um, single row top light, I mean, I had plenty of light. It, it was great, it was really good. Uh, again, I'll get into more detail on that a little bit later, uh, not in this video, but this is more about the electronics actual install where I put things and how I ran it. Um, on the last video, I started to get into some detail on installing the rear bench sheet. On this detail, I will get into a lot more, on this video, I'll get into a lot more detail on the installation of the uh, UTV mountain accessories rear bench seat. Overall, I love it. I mean, it is it's comfortable. You can easily put three people in the back seat. I put, you'll see in the video, I put my wife, my nine-year-old daughter, and 13-year-old son, all three in the back seat. Uh, you'll have to excuse my nine-year-old daughter. Uh, she actually woke up to come out in the garage, was not just really willing participant, but she did it. Um, but I've had my father in the back seat, and I'll detail on that video. He's like 5'10", 250, 260, you know, larger guy. He fit easily. He said he had more room in the back seat than he did the front seat. Um, I sat in the back seat. I'm six foot one, 200 pounds, and I had just plenty of room. Wasn't an issue. The seat itself, the quality looks great. It um, is comfortable. I do have a couple of issues with it, a couple of things I would like to change. I'll detail that in the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. And then I also have a couple of uh, uh, tips on the install. And uh, especially the tip on where you put this little bracket that mounts to the factory release that on the seat basis, there's a release. You reach through the seat, you grab the little handle and you pull it up and it releases the back of the seat so you can pull the seat out. The UTV mount accessories, the bench seat comes with an extension that bolts onto that bracket. You can either put this extension where it comes off, where it angles up or it angles down. You'll see in the video, if you install the bench seat, make sure you install, put that extension piece on so it angles down. It'll be explained in the video, but that's critical. I mean, that's pretty important. I put it on the wrong way to begin with. So I figured out the hard way that that needed to go on a certain direction. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much all I covered on this video. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I will try to answer them. Um, if you want some more pictures or some more details, again, I have the build thread on the Polaris General Four on the Polaris General Forums under the build section, and it's labeled the same thing as my videos. Um, Polaris General XT4 Pursuit Edition build, I believe is what I called it, and I can throw some more photographs up on that, some more pictures, some more detailed pictures. Uh, I have a couple. I have in the video where the MTX subwoofer is sitting. I believe it's this video I have it on, and kind of how much room it takes, really doesn't take up a lot of room. I rode in the front passenger seat very comfortably, I didn't have an issue, my wife rode in it all this weekend, we hunted pigs, I mean, all through the night this last weekend, worked great. I mean, things, just the systems worked great. The only, like again, the only system I had an issue with are the windshield wipers. I have a plan for that, I'm just not going to do it right now, I've got other things going on, I will get around to it, but I'm pretty sure I have... A good solution for the windshield wipers. Um, again, other than that, here comes this next video and here in the next few days I'll try to publish some more from when I put the skid plates on, when I put the rock sliders on, that's a whole other story in itself. Um, I put the Gris Tech liners on, I've got some pictures of that, I'll take some video, I really didn't have any issues with that at all, they fit great. I mean, can't say enough about the Gris Tech liners, they really did fit well. Uh, I believe I mentioned it in another video, but while my wife and I were out hunting hogs on uh, this last Saturday night, we went through a low area, didn't know it was a low area, I did not know it was as soupy as it was, I actually had no clue until we sunk. And we got stuck. And I do mean stuck. Um, I'll kind of go into some detail about that, some of my thoughts on the, um, the tires that come on the vehicle, kind of my initial impressions, I only have 100 miles on it but enough to make kind of an initial, you know, assessment. Um, I'll get into some of the winch parts and accessories I added, shackle, 
uh, line I added, the aesthetic line, all of that worked really well. Thank God I had it. Thank God it came with a winch because otherwise we'd have been walking several, several, several miles um, back to go get the John Deere 5093E to pull it out. Uh, we didn't have to do that. There was a, a dead tree nearby. We were able to get out. I'll get into a little bit more of that in some pictures later. So for now, we'll just go with the um, electronics, some of the install, and the rear bench seats in more detail. Now I'll talk to y'all later. Now let me show you some of the wiring that I got done under the dash. So, I have the Marinko box for the windshield wiper installed right here. Everything is split loomed. I have this loom that will go out this little U-fitting right here and will come up on top of the dash and run across under the windshield. Oh, sorry, GoPro shut off for some reason. Like I was saying, I will run this wire along the header on the bottom of the windshield, which will go to each of the motors. It then splits off and comes over here. And these are the wires that will go to the switch to control the windshield wiper. Now, down here, in the general, there's actually quite a lot of room to mount things. The problem is getting to the areas to actually bolt them into the firewall to mount them. What you're looking at right here is the NVX four channel amplifier. And above that is the ecstasy um, power control system module for the PCS44. Both are mounted up on the firewall and out of the way. For the PCS module, it comes out and terminates right here with four switches. So what this does, is a self-contained unit. The relays are in this box up under the dash, and then the fuses are this small fuse panel right here. So they are going to be going to various light systems. Uh, if I have any issue where one of the lights shorts out for some reason or has a, uh, a ground interrupt, anything like that happens, it will blow one of these fuses up under the hood and will leave the rest of the system up and operational. Again, there's a lot of room under the dash to mount things. Let me tell you, getting under there to drill the holes and getting through all of this stuff was difficult. It's kind of funny. It doesn't look like a lot of progress has been made just because it pretty much looks the same for the most part, but there has been a lot of progress. These little items right here, these are ankle biters. Um, and I'm pretty particular. As you can see, absolutely everything is in split loom. It's all gonna be zip tied in, it's gonna be secured. I would rather take more time up front, get it right in the first time, and not have to come back and revisit it again later. So I'm kind of particular about that. Other thing I've gotten done, this harness I have installed is for the ride command system. Um, it's pretty well wired in. I do not have the wire run for the GPS yet. I don't have the front and rear cameras in yet. And in the back, there will be another system that's mounted back here in the back of the roof. Um, I think that's for the group ride system. Anyway, I'll work on that tomorrow. I'll start getting it done. I do not have the rear seat in yet. The main reason being is I still have wires to run through the center console, mainly for the rock lights. I don't want to get everything bolted in and set up until I have all the wiring done. Once the wiring is done, things will start to progress actually pretty quickly. Now, on that note, let me see if I can get some light back here. So what you're looking at right here is the control system for the rock lights. Since I could not put the vents there, I went ahead and mounted the control box in that location. And the reason for that location is, is central on the vehicle. That way I will not have to have as many extensions when I run the rock lights to the front and back um, because they'll go out you know, equidistant from the center console to the back and then to the front. I still will probably have to have a couple extensions for the very rear and the very, and the very front rock light, but I'm going to try to minimize that as much as possible. Now, to get to this point, I've had both the front flares off, I've had the fenders loose, um, I've had a lot of things loose just to gain access to the areas that I needed to gain access to. 
the plan for tomorrow is going to be to continue on a lot of electrical, get the rock lights installed, get some electrical components finished up, um, try to get everything so I can start reassembling. Um, get the back seat in, get the rear seat belts on, the harnesses, uh, start getting the dash back together, get all the switch gear in, just various little things that have to be done up front, the tedious tasks, before I can start to throw everything back together. Uh, now, if any of you out there know a good alternative to this, I'd love to see a comment. Um, if there's something sold on Amazon, like I said, this very similar shape, but is made to lay down, that would be absolutely perfect. Uh, I don't, I just don't want to go cut a hole in the bottom of this panel to subset that in and make it fit. That's just a little more extreme than I want to get. If anyone has any questions, if there's something that I have done that you want to know more about, let me know. I'll be more than happy to cover it for you. Um, other than that, that's about it for tonight. It's been a long day. I'm ready to go take a shower. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have some more stuff done, some more electrical, maybe even get the heating in, the ductwork all finished up. Um, I still need to install the two hoses that go to the radiator system from the heater. I had some pliers like this somewhere and I could not find them. So I just went to the auto parts store and bought them. That way I can just go ahead and pinch off those, pinch off those hoses so I don't lose a whole lot of antifreeze. And then once all the um, heater tubing is installed, just release them. And I've already bought antifreeze to put back in it. And over the next couple of days, I'll also start the bleeding process. All right, so I owe y'all some updates. Um, I have not been videoing as much as what I would have liked to have done. And the main reason being is this weekend, we're going to our ranch, which will be the first time out for the uh, new Polaris General. So I have been busy. <clears throat> what I have managed to get done is the light bar is installed. Both of the mirrors are installed. All of the wiring is done and complete. Now I will say one thing. If you decide to put ride command in a Polaris General does not already have it. There are two different ride command installation packages offered. Um, I forget the part numbers, but one of them is $310 and the other one is $500. If you are installing the Rockford Fosgate system with the Rockford Fosgate amplifier, like the stage four, you need the $500 system. If you are installing an outboard amplifier, like an aftermarket, like I am, um, I have the four channel amplifier and the MTX sub, you need the $310 installation system. Ask me how I know. The difference is the harness that connects up to the amplifier, the more expensive system has a harness that plugs directly into the Rockford Fosgate amplifier, and the less expensive system has the three separate plugs that you can plug an adapter in to go to an RCA. Um, I'm waiting on mine. Hopefully it will be in tomorrow morning so I can get it installed. And I just have that one harness put in, put the ride command module in, and I should be good to go. Um, I have the Gris Tech liners right here. They're going to go in here pretty soon. Uh, of course, all the rock lights are in. I did another video with that. I will post that. I don't think I have yet. I have all the dash back in. All of the switches are in, everything works, it all works that PCS44. Um, let's see, have, right now I am about to be working on the UTV mountain accessories rear bench seat. Um, getting it in was a pain in the rear. Basically you put your sliders onto the bottom of the seat and then you have to fish the harnesses through the slots that are in the seat to uh, bolt them down to the factory mounting points. Um, let's see, everything is pretty well done. I still need to put the skid plates on. Um, I'm not going to put the primary clutch in yet. I'm going to put the rollers in the secondary. And I want to do a 0 to 60 before the clutch, after the clutch, and then after the tune. But as you can see, most all the wiring is complete. One thing I need to do... Um, I have the USB outlets up here in the dash. 
I have a relay that I need to put in line with it. Uh, I just didn't think about it when I put them in, but they're always on. Here is the MTX subwoofer. And for anyone wanting to know, this is the amount of space that you lose right here. So it's really not too intrusive on the passenger side, but you are going to lose some space. I will get some exact measurements later. Uh, the hardest part of this install, fitting everything in a dash, is not all the stuff that I put in, but it was all this ducting for the heater. And I mean, there is a lot of ducting. Um, the items that I installed did not interfere with that at all. They're all lower than this. This is just something that takes up a lot of room and is, no, you just got to do a lot of fishing to get it in. But stand by, I'm going to start working on the rear bench seat, I'll get that in, and then I will have some photos and video once that is done as well. I just left off on the last video where I was starting the install on the rear seats. As you can see, they are completely in, and to be honest with you, it is really good. It is a really good rear seat. Um, there were some difficulties, as I have detailed before, with the fitment on the metal pieces that go on the center console and how they fit onto the console itself. Um, once I was able to manipulate them some, they ended up fitting really well, but it did take a little bit of work. But as far as the rear seat itself is concerned, this UTV mountain accessories seat has been great. We took the general out to our ranch this last weekend. Um, my father, who is about five foot 10, 260 pounds, rode in a rear seat, had plenty of room. Actually, he said that he had more room in the rear seat than he did the front. Uh, my wife rode in the rear seat, my daughter. Uh, it just worked out really well for what we're going to use the general for and for transporting you know five people at a time it's extremely wide you can easily put two adults and one child say up to 12 13 years old in the center they will all fit without an issue now there are a couple of caveats to the install on this rear seat um when you are putting it in, it is going to be a lot easier if you have someone else with you to help position it into your general. I did it by myself. I got it in. It worked, but it was a pain in the rear. Uh, I did not have any issue putting the seat bottoms, the uh, brackets off of the stock seats onto the bottom of this rear seat, and I did not have any issues with getting everything lined up. Just for whatever reason, my first try, my first try at positioning just worked out. Uh, if you're sitting in the rear seat here in a second, I will have my wife and my daughter come out and sit in it just so you can kind of get an idea of the leg room that you have. Um, my wife, she's five foot five, so not really tall. Uh, my daughter is probably five foot four right now. And uh, both of them fit very easily. I rode in the rear seat some. Um, I actually had my nine year old daughter who will see you here in a minute drive the general sum and I had my wife drive the general sum and when they kind of switched off I rode in the back seat I had plenty of room I am six foot one uh, about 200 pounds no issues at all plenty of room now some of the difficulties when you put it in number one when you first position the seat into the vehicle and you have to get you have to pass the belts through these slots and then you have to bolt them to the factory seatbelt brackets under the seat. When you're doing that, the easiest way I found to keep the seat up as I was doing the positioning was to put a bungee strap through these two openings for a seatbelt. And then I ran the bungee strap up to this bar up here just to hold the seats in an upright position. You know, the backrest was right here. And that way it gave me some room to get behind and under the seat as far as doing all of the bolting. Uh, so that worked out really well. A couple of caveats. On the brackets, the factory brackets that attach the seat actually to the general itself, 
they have these clips to help you release the seats. Let me see if I can get a picture of it. This is the back of the front seat, but the rear seats are exactly the same. This bracket right here. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to use a flashlight. It's just hard to get light in here. You see these two holes that are on the bracket. That is what... So on the back of the bench seat, there is a strap that runs all the way up to the back. And you pull that strap that is attached to these that releases the seat if you want to pull the bench seat out. These two brackets are bent at an angle. You can either put them on so they come out and then angle up, or you can put them on so they come out and angle down. Make sure when you install these, and if you install this bench seat, you will see what I'm talking about. When you install these two extensions, make sure they angle down and not up. If you angle them up, you will not have enough leverage when you pull on that strap to fully release the seat. Ask me how I know. In the process of cleaning my general after we had gotten it extremely dirty, I attempted to lift the bench seats up just to tilt them forward to let the water drain out the back. This is one issue that I actually do have with these bench seats. If you look closely, you can still see mud and sand that I'm still going to have to vacuum out here in the creases. You can see some right here. These seats do not have a hole at all where the seat back and the bottom cushion meet. So when you wash the interior of your General, if you have these bench seats, this holds water and it ends up being, I don't know, about an inch deep in the back and sloping off as it comes forward. When you wash it, you have to sit here with your hand and push the water out into the floorboard until you have enough of it gone so you can use a towel to soak up the rest. And then, if it was dirty, you end up with sand and dirt in this crevice. I am going to look at pulling these seats out and seeing how difficult it is to pull this whole cover off so that I can take it to an upholstery shop and have them do what's called a, a, a French seam. It's very similar to where the belt buckles come through. I'm going to see about having a seam like this put into the bottom of each side of the bench seat. Two reasons. Number one is so that the water can drain out whenever you get it wet or wash it. And number two is so I can reach through that hole and have direct access to this seat release like it's on the front seats. If you take the factory seats out, you just reach in between the upright portion and the bottom cushion when they're in the rear. You simply reach through here, grab the release, and release the seat. Dead simple. I like simple. Simple works. Where that became an issue this weekend is I had originally mounted these brackets the wrong way, where they angled up and I did not have enough leverage. When I went to go release the seat, let me get my flashlight again so I can show you guys. Again, I'm sorry, it's kind of dark in my garage. So I have to use a flashlight. But if you can see this strap that the light is on, now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's right here. This strap. You pull that strap up, and it goes down the back of the seat, inside the seat cover, down to where the release is, and that's what allows you to pull the bench seat out. If you have that bracket where it connects to release, on there where it is angled up instead of down, you do not have enough leverage to release that seat. We ended up having to get a stick, put it through this loop, 
and then wedge it up against the rear bar and pull up just to get enough leverage and we were finally able to get the rear seats to release. The other issue is once you release the seat and you tilt it up, that loop will pull through behind the seat because it does not run just behind the seat, it runs in the material itself. That loop will pull into the material and then you have to get fish tape to reach down, tape it to this loop and pull it back out, which is why I have them now zip tied. I know it doesn't look good, but this zip tie runs through that loop so that whenever I pull the loop to release it, that loop cannot then fall back through the material on the back of the seat to where it would be impossible to get if you do not already have the seat loose. If this loop falls through while this seat is connected, you are going to have hell trying to get your hand behind the seat between the rear firewall and the seat to try to get down there to the release to get the seat out. And there is no way to get to it from under the seat. That seat sits right on top of the plastic floorboard. There is no way to get in there. You would, I mean, I don't know what to say guys. It would be really hard to get the seats out. Anyway, other than that, the seat fits great. It runs all the way from side to side. You get the maximum amount of room. You can easily carry three people back here. It's comfortable. Um, it is a little bit raised. You get just a little bit of stadium seating and it it is working out well for us. A couple of changes I am gonna make, just as I was detailing, I'm gonna see about having that seam cut at the bottom of the seat base where it meets upright so I can get my hand back there and it will drain water whenever I wash it or it gets wet. But other than that, the seat itself has been great. So give me just a second. I'm gonna get my wife out here and my daughter. I'll have them sit in it, and that way you can actually kind of get your own visual visualization of the legroom they have and how well they fit in the back seat. So give me just a minute. Okay, so I have my wife, daughter, and son all in the back seat. Uh, two basically adults. My son's 13, but he's already five foot eight. And then a very tired nine-year-old. No, I have to excuse her. <laughs> Do y'all have room? Yes. Oh, yes. A lot. Enough leg room? Yes, yeah. a lot. And he's even with the short with the seat that's pushed back further. <laughs> Basically, all three have leg room. You'll have to excuse the tired nine-year-old. It's about 9.30 at night on school night. And we just woke her up. <laughs> and we just woke her up. But this is just to kind of display and show that with the rear bench seat in, you can put three people in it very comfortably. Of course, they don't have their harnesses on. With the harnesses, they have even more room. But if you do want to transport three people in the back of your general, this will absolutely work. <laughs> 